We've all been there. You're standing in a museum, staring at a painting, and all you can think is, I don't get it. To me, knowing the story behind an artwork is a huge part of knowing how to look at it. I'm Amanda, the host of the Art of History podcast, where we view history through the lens of some really great works of art. Each episode, we dive deep into the bigger picture behind some familiar and maybe not so familiar pieces. Check out Art of History now wherever you get your podcasts. for joining us on this special episode. We are so excited because we have a special guest joining us. So Asher, have you heard of Ramadan? Yes, I think so. At home, we don't celebrate it, but other families might. I learned about that at school. Yay, yay! That's right. Even though in our family, we don't celebrate Ramadan, it's a special month for many families around the world. And we are so lucky because today we have Mrs. Hashmi, who is a former Islamic school elementary teacher and the host of Kids Podcast, Once Upon a Crescent. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Hashmi. We are so thrilled to have you here today. Thank you for joining us today. Hello. Hello, everyone. Kristen and Asher, thank you for having me. My name is Mrs. Hashmi. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you! Yes, of course. I was born and raised in Texas, and my family is from India. Growing up, my parents placed a lot of value and emphasis on religion and the way that we do things. We practice a religion in our family, too. We practice Christianity, and we don't celebrate Ramadan, so I don't know too much. Mm-hmm. But would love to learn more. Could you explain more about it for us? Yes, of course. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar, in which Muslims fast from sunrise to sunset. The beginning and end of Ramadan are determined by the sighting of the crescent moon. And the crescent moon is when, like, the moon is a sliver. Mm Mm-hmm. It's in this month that we believe that the first verses of the Qur'an were revealed to our Prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Could you tell us what the Qur'an is? The Qur'an is the holy book for Muslims. Oh, like in our home, we read the Bible. That is what our family reads. Yes, exactly. So one of the first things that happen during Ramadan is that Muslims will fast from sunrise to sunset every day. This means that they don't eat or drink anything during the day, but can eat and drink before the sun rises and after it sets. Oh, so Muslims will fast this month. You got it! Why do they fast? Muslims fast because it's one of the five main pillars of Islam. God commanded Muslims to fast in order to gain an awareness and mindfulness of Him and His presence. When you hold yourself back from eating and drinking for such a long period of time, it really highlights the blessings in your life. And I've always felt that fasting really pushed me to be more reflective and more self-aware of those little things that we take for granted. And it's always good to be thankful for the everyday things, like mommy or daddy. A mermaid! So cute! That's our family. That's a good example. Yeah, it's sometimes helpful to do something different to give us a new perspective or view of our life. So Mrs. Hashmi, what does a typical day look like during Ramadan while you're fasting? A typical day while fasting looks exactly like your normal day. Uh Uh-huh. Except you wake up before dawn to eat a meal that will fuel you for many hours. After you eat that pre-dawn meal, you would go back to sleep and then resume your day and hold back from eating anything or drinking anything until sunset. 
So for the time zone that I live in right now, that means that I wake up at 5 a.m., I eat a meal, and then I don't eat or drink anything until 7.25 p.m. And that's when sunset happens. And when sunset happens, you're free to eat and drink and enjoy all those blessings. Got it. And sunset is when the sun goes down. You got it. You must get very hungry. I get hungry if I don't eat for just a few hours. <laughs> that first bite after sunset must be so good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the best way that I can describe what it feels like to finally break your fast is similar to how it is when you're in school and a classmate brings in cupcakes for everyone to enjoy. <laughs> But you can't eat the cupcakes because class time is happening. Yay! So you have to wait until after math, after science, after social studies is done. And then maybe after lunch um, or recess, you can finally enjoy that treat. Shoo! But that waiting period is really hard and challenging because all you can think about is the cupcakes sitting in the back of the classroom. Oh yeah, that's so hard. At home too, mommy has dessert waiting for me in the kitchen. I have to wait until dinner is over. Yes, but isn't it rewarding to wait? Yeah, but it's still hard. Exactly. But when you finally take that first bite of the cupcake, it's so incredibly delicious, partly because you waited for it. It's relieving and it's enjoyable all at the same time. So even though this all sounds very rewarding, we imagine fasting every day is not an easy thing to do. What is the biggest challenge that you face during fasting? Some challenges during fasting that I would share is sometimes you actually forget you're fasting. Oh no! So out of habit, if you accidentally take a sip of water or accidentally take a bite of food, Uh-oh. I think that is a big challenge to just remember that you're in this state of fasting. And if that does happen accidentally, your fast still counts and you just keep going as if it never happened. Phew. Oh yeah, I would forget sometimes because I'm used to eating and drinking all day long. And Mrs. Hashmi, do kids fast too? Oh yeah. The way that children celebrate Ramadan is by participating in their own capacity for fasting. So my own 10-year-old, who's turning 11 soon, has now started fasting this year. Awesome! And it's so amazing to see him really hold back from food and water at such a young age and seeing him feel so proud about himself over this one accomplishment. Yes! So children do partake in the celebration of Ramadan by challenging themselves as well. And also coming along to the masjid, the mosque is filled with kids during this time. And we stay up at night because the prayers are at night and all food and drink are allowed at night. So you would see a lot of kids at the mosque during this month. Mosque, is that like a church? You got it. So what's it like at the mosque during Ramadan? At church during Christmas, it's very festive. And we go to sing carols. Ho, ho, ho. Some people like to hand out goodie bags filled with treats for kids at the mosque. Ooh, goodie bags. Some people bring all kinds of sweets and lollipops and what have you. So I think children definitely feel that Ramadan joy. I love that. Thank you, Asher. So breaking fast means you get to eat. We love talking about food. Is there anything that everyone eats during Ramadan? 
The foods and drinks while opening the fast can vary from family to family, but one thing remains the same everywhere. Uh -huh. Everywhere people break their fast with a bite of date. Oh, I know what dates are. They're sweet. And that is something we know from the tradition of our prophet, peace be upon him, that he would open his fast by eating dates. In my household, we love the fried foods. We just can't get enough of them. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Every year we tell ourselves we're not going to eat as many fried foods, but we end up eating all the fried foods. <laughs> so samosas, yummy. spring rolls, and our personal favorite. We love mozzarella sticks at the time of breaking our fast. Mozzarella sticks. I love fried food too. Trip tapura. Since we don't celebrate Ramadan in our family, what can we do for our friends that do celebrate Ramadan? Mm, something that you would be able to do to support your friends that celebrate Ramadan is just simply checking in on them, maybe asking how it's going and um, lending an attentive ear to see how their day went. I think that's really supportive. Yeah, I could do that. That's definitely something we can do. Check in on our friends that are fasting for Ramadan. You got it! So, Mrs. Hashmi, thank you so much for all of this information. Is there anything that you would like for our listeners to remember about Ramadan? Overall, I think I would love to convey that Ramadan is a beautiful, special, spiritual time for Muslims around the world. It's a time that we really deeply connect to God and we look inward to try to kick some bad habits and try to adopt some new ones. And most importantly, we try to fulfill an obligation commanded by God. Well, Mrs. Hashmi, thank you so much for being here with us today. It was so fun to learn about Ramadan and how some families celebrate this special month. Yes, yes, yes! Ramadan seems like a beautiful and meaningful month. Thank you so much, Kristen and Asher, for having me. If anyone else would like to learn more about Islam in general, you can check out my podcast. It's called Once Upon a Crescent. Muslim Kids Podcast. You'll hear original stories about Muslim characters facing different scenarios and how they navigate it with the help of strategies that are based off of Islamic teachings and practices. That's Once Upon a Crescent Muslim Kids Podcast. Thank you again for having me. Bye! really liked having her on the show. Me too. It's always meaningful and eye-opening to learn about how other families around the world celebrate and practice what they believe in. Every family is different, and that's always okay. We never end our episode without some jokes. Can I go first? Yes. Can I do two? Sure. Knock, knock. Who's there? Weekend. Weekend who? We can do anything we want. <laughs> oh, that was so clever. I love it. Okay, can I go? Remember I said one more? I have one more. Oh, okay. You go again. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Who? Who, who? What are you, an owl? <laughs> I knew that one, actually. Okay, Mommy's turn. Knock, knock. Who's there? Roach. Roach who? Wrote you a letter, and I'm putting it in your mailbox. Wait, I don't get it. Roach, like a cockroach? Wrote you a letter? Oh, uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today on another episode. 
If you haven't done so already, grownups, please leave us a review and let us know what you want to learn about next. And if you'd like to be featured on our show, leave us a voicemail on our website. That's www.culturekidspodcast.com. And don't forget to follow us on our Instagram page for more content you can check out throughout the week. Until next time. See you later. Bye.